Here we are at another Electric Trade Show, Coventry Building Society Arena. Let's go inside and have a look what they've got to offer. Come on. Hello and welcome to Actual Events again. We're here at Elex, Jake and I, not just me and you, but we've got loads of other people. We'll take you and show you around, starting here on the, the click stands. Yes, we've got the new Illusion range that's sat here. We've got the ClickSmart Plus. Yeah, and then if we... Loads of people have been asking about that ClickSmart have, Plus, yeah. haven't they? they have, we'll yeah. be showing you how to do it, how you can do it, what it can do, all the solutions around that as well. Plus, we've got all our standard stuff. I mean, we call it standard. It's pretty amazing if you look at it. Starting with our Grid Pro, goes all the way through the ranges that we've got available. The mode stuff. People are telling us just how much they like mode, Jake, yes. and how much they fit it. We've got the uh, locator sockets here as well, which is a really good accessory to have. Essentials range. Now, the this bit here has been... Uh, loads of people are saying that is the best socket here. They're saying, by far, this one is there. We always fit it, always ask for this one. But they didn't know about the see-through Perspex cover, yeah, again, Jake. another new product that we've got here on the, the click stand. Yeah, something new to see there. Um, we get through to the flows. Everyone loves a flow plug, don't they? Yep, and they've got the uh, push fit terminals now on pretty much all of them. So you can still buy the push fit and you can buy the um, screw terminals as well. So if we make our way to ESP. ESP, so this looks after all of our security, all our emergency lighting. We've got Sangamo here as well. Lots of people are loving this, Jake, because it takes them back in time a little bit. This, yes, back in time. However, this is modern day stuff. So this is looking at all the relaunched wiring accessories yes. for heating systems and stuff like that, the wireless stuff. All of that in and around there. We've got this to demo as well for you guys, as well as the time clocks. I used to fit these years ago. They are absolutely bomb-proof. Brilliant bit of kit they are, Jake. All the new cameras that we, we see here as well. We've got Recall HD. We've got IP on the other side as well. So HD view IP on the other side. We've got the essentials range that we normally see, yeah. emergency lights, plenty of other bits and bobs on this stand. We've also brought with us, as you can see, the array of fire products that we've got here. So all the panels, the addressable, conventional, plus we've got the two wire system there that has been a lot of good. A lot of people are asking about that. More CCT for you to look at if you want to, and access is Access, a big thing. yeah, we've got um, wireless doorbells and whatnot for getting into your properties. Yeah, in and out. More and cameras. Out. More cameras coming up, there's more. We've got, we've got our village on the go here, let's have a look. So over with it, the commodity side of things. So you're looking at your, your switches, your, your screws, your connectors, you're looking at all of those. Over to here then, we've got this one. All of these guys, look at these, we've got this. There's a, there's, a, there's a demo going on at the moment. So we've got a demo going on. So here we are, over to the guys over here at Unicrimp. And as you can see, this is commodities. So this is looking at contractor tubs, crimps, glands, and grommets, tie wraps, we've what's this? OB1, so it's the new sealant that we have launched uh, via Unicrim. OB1? OB1, yes. Oh, well, right, the different, I wonder why there's so much of it, it's all the different colours. Different colours, <laughs> yeah, so you can pretty much go from white to brown, or terracotta as they call it, grey, to grey, to grey black, there. yeah, there's a grey in there. Everything's grey nowadays. Everybody loves a bit of grey. Everyone loves a bit of grey. But as you see, all the tie wraps you've got, all the bits, all the other commodities, Contractor tubs is the big thing, Jake. Everybody loves a contractor tub, full of lots of goodies inside there. And then across to our other company here, we've got Avaya. Avaya, as you know, do lots and lots with our lighting products, and we've got them all here for you to have a look at, plus some of the new stuff. The new stuff has really been the bit that everyone's really talking about. Yeah, well, we've, we've introduced this light box to give aspect of every single color that we can, we can do with our general standard yeah, uh, lights Yeah, you pick these well. up. Omni V2. That's a good one. It's yeah. the latest and greatest of the new uh, downlights that we see. Revamped. Yeah, Revamped. we've had a look at it through to feedback. We've had a look at that and re-engineered re those. We've got our lights as well, which people are using our pathfinders, so people are going with them. Just again, it's that time of year now, isn't it, where people are looking at, it's a bit dark, I've got to do something about it, so they're going for those. So we're here. <laughs> Quick whirlwind, we are here. We're, it's been fantastic to see so many people. Yeah. These events, without a doubt, have been missed. But we can honestly say, without a doubt, that we are back. What we got here is OB1, the original, the best, and number one. I see Ben earlier. He was actually gluing two bricks together underwater. And I thought there must be some catch. 
but now he's going to let me have a go. So, Ben, what if you hold that brick for me? I am now going to put this sealant on the bottom brick underwater, which is um, impressive. Obviously, I'm not as good as Ben, but there you go. I am electrician. Ain't bad for go. a first time, is it? Now, always click that so things, it stops coming out. We can quickly wipe it and put the top on it, wherever it is, the top. With this top on it, it can stay like this for six months and you can use it any time with that six months. But now, the proof is in this pudding. You all right? This surprises me as much as surprise you. We get the brick, which is quite heavy. Do you want to feel that brick? Is that a normal brick? I feel like David Jason and only falls and horses. <laughs> right, here we go. It's underwater, it's submerged underwater. And now can I pick it up, Ben? Yeah, pick it up, Rick up. And that is stuck. <laughs> but the, the good thing about it, you, you've still got 20 minutes to play with it. If it isn't settled properly, and you want to square it up, you've got that. But the amazing thing is, this is underwater and it's stuck. It's not just two bricks. If you want to stick any, anything on a wall, you yeah, can use it. Yeah, so it's perfect for all the external work, all of the internal work when it comes to woodworks, cladding, PVC, metals, guttering. It's a true all-round multi-surface construction sealant and adhesive hybrid. It's, it's like when I see the T2 trunk in, we usually have sticky back and you pull off the blue, yeah. stick it off, but you still get a bit of a gap you where still the get a bit of a gap, But yeah. this you blocks got, all that yeah, gap so no that. moisture can get behind. No moisture, no. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's bacteria and fungal protected as well, so the bacteria and fungal will not penetrate this sealant at all. It's also toxin free, so there's no odours, so it's great for food prep areas. It's perfect for enclosed spaces, so you're not getting headaches or anything else when using this product. So, and also you don't need a mirror mask or gloves no. or anything. No. Obviously, if you're applying it above your head, definitely wear a mask and definitely wear glasses, but normal ways, just up and down, it's pretty good. Yeah, no problem. Wow, that's, it. that's impressive, very impressive. Thank Cheers, you. Ben. Thanks, Billy. Thank you very much. Cheers. Hello, it's David Sabry, the good-looking half of DSES, uh, over on the Avaya stand at, uh, where are we, Alex? We are Coventry, 20, aren't we? Yeah. 20 21, one. eventually. Yeah, got there in the end, didn't we? And uh, you've got a rather exciting product there, haven't I you? I do, it's the uh, new Omni V2 downlighter with a few new features and benefits, mainly being that the business end with the CCT switch and uh, driver is in here, so you haven't got a heat build-up. Uh, does that mean I can put my insulation you can, straight exactly over the top that. of that? You can then? put insulation straight over the top of that, little hole, and the driver and all the governors can go above with a push fit connector as well, so that for speed of fitting. If you do 500 in a big house, you fire through them a lot quicker than you would if you're using a screw fit. Now, I, I know that's obviously that's going to be a class two light, but have you got provision for earth in your connector here? Because a lot of lighting manufacturers, a, a three core, <laughs> yes, you have. We do, on Good that, man. yeah. Because a, a lot of light manufacturers, they only give us oh, uh, yes, a, you a mean. two yeah. core cable. They don't, they don't realize that it's often two twin and earths going into there, but I like yeah. that because that's, like you say, it's, it's got what you need. And it's got what we need. Okay, another feature is uh, it comes with a white bezel. You can remove that and put a different colour bezel on it, white chrome, satin chrome, black. Anti-grass apparently is coming back in the fashion. I've not seen it, but yeah, apparently yeah, it is. I've seen a few like and that. Change that. That is a tilt then inside there. Three oh, tilts. Right. So it's adjustable. So you don't, yeah. And you, so the, you've only one of these on the shelf. You've got four or five products in one box with the adjustable bezel to go on it. So straight on. You've got a tiltable downlighter Very swift. from the same product. Yeah. IP rated? IP65 is standard with the normal bezel on it. You lose a bit of IP rate and it goes down to 54 with that on, but... Yeah. Still perfectly fine for your bathroom. Exactly that. Well, yeah, for the bathroom, obviously IP65 in the shower, in zone one. 
what, what, what is that? Is that, um, is that, is that stainless steel? That's plastic, that's which is plastic. handy for soffits around when people put these outside yeah, bun bungalows, so coastal that. areas. Obviously, that wouldn't last long if it was a metal yeah. one. So plastic, you haven't got to worry about that. Right, it's plastic. Oh. Does it? that's nice it doesn't, thing. no, it's a very good finish. And like I say, all the antique brass, the black, they all look good finishes. So yeah, nice little unit. Excellent stuff, liking it. Good stuff. Have you all got an RCD in your installations at home? How many of you, put your hand up if you test your RCD once every six months? I've got one liar over here. <laughs> and again, it's, it's, if we're not doing it, what's the chances of our customers doing it? Exactly, yeah. So <laughs> when you say uh, perform on a working RCD or RCBO, that's where it's been sat for a number of months or True. years. So, so we need to know what, what is the first test. Right, so you've got a choice here, haven't you? You've got a choice of probably doing the test button, you've got a choice of doing times one, or you've got a choice of doing the times five. How many of you just put it on auto and hit the button? We do, don't we? We just historically do that. Now, this is a working RCD that's been there for a number of years, months, whatever. You don't know whether the homeowner has been pressing that test button. I guarantee you if you were to go and the first test you perform would be the one times test you would start to find RCDs that probably didn't disconnect within the maximum time have any of you found that before yeah a few people okay there's a few people starting to say yeah. yes they are okay the one times test is almost like a, a, you're starting to put it through its true parameters of testing how many of you the first test you do on a EICR is press the test button put your hand up if that's the first test you do so a couple of you are starting to say yes. What you're doing there is you're giving it a heads up that you're about to test it. So I guarantee then after that it'll work, won't it? Yeah. But it wouldn't have worked whether you do that, that first time test. Well, it's not guaranteed to it because it's sat there for quite a long time. And that test button is a really important test to do, Jake, isn't it? And it's gone from three months to six. For yeah. what reason? Just because of the, they're saying they're suggesting that the lubricants inside are, are, are a lot better now. Although I don't know how that affects older devices. Yeah, because they're still old lubricant yeah, exactly, inside, aren't yeah. they? So, but okay. we're, we're being told and led to believe that the stuff that's inside them is better than it once was. Come to the quick stand, and this is Jake, and I'm going to ask him a couple of things because I see now we're doing consumer units. Now I've been advocating for consumer units for the last three years, and now we're doing them. Can you explain why this one's special? Well, all our products are special, Bill. You know that. Okay, this is, <laughs> right, it's extra special. Extra special, yeah. No, the consumer units. We've um, we've just started a new range. We've got. Pretty much every base is covered. We've got all the split load side of things. We've got RCBOs, uh, straightaway boards. We do the mini boards that come along with it as well. So typically people use them in garages and places like that. But some of the devices that we've got in here, we've gone one stage further. We've managed to uh, add 80 amp devices as standard, which a lot of people were asking for. All of our RCCBs or RCBOs come as type A standard. Mm -hmm. So there's no AC devices here. We've got SPDs that go inside the board as well, so you can get them as a retrofit kit or you can have them incorporated in the board already. We've got the tails clamp. A lot of people are asking for this. A lot of people are asking for this. I've just noticed this and I noticed on the board below. This is new because I've never seen the clamps before because obviously you yeah. just go in there with your feed, which will make it really um, stable. Yeah, yeah, secure. Um, throughout the industry, a lot of people were suggesting that actually tail cables weren't being fixed correctly. So we've incorporated this to help reduce the strain that's being put on the cables that are coming once they come outside the consumer unit. It's just another additional feature and a great feature at that from... So we stripped the cable and that looks like it's got a furrow on it? Is yeah, it so, been... yeah the, all, all of our cables that are in the consumer unit are standard, so your internal wiring as we call it all come with um, complete ferrules on there as well. So what you see is what you get? Yeah, 100%. And that, yeah. That's, that's, that's solid. I like that. I like the room between your, your neutral bar and because your RCBOs, you've got the neutral at the back and yep. the, the, the so again, some live of that we at the front. Was conscious about was the space enabling contractors really to work to the best of their ability, dress them in nicely. It's always a pleasure when you've got a lot of space between these two and you're not fiddling around trying to get your hands in there. They're awkward at the best of times, so we just tried to make it a little bit 
uh, easier. We've got blanks as well, Bill. I like the blanks. I was looking at the blanks. Uh, yeah. A couple of things I like as well. You've got a, a grommet strip at yeah. the back, you yeah. know? And grommet uh, strips, uh, again, is a standard, and it's, it's a robust, robust uh, strip that sits at the back there. It's not one of these ones that just push in and push out. Very, very tight fitting on there as well. Also, you've got the, is that a 35 mil gland hole? That's a 40 mil. 40 so mil. 40, 32, 25, and 20 mil uh, all the way around the surface uh, of the board. Again, we've, we've covered all bases. And I like the way they're sat back a bit, because if you do have trunking across yeah. here, obviously that is going to marry up with the trunking. Yeah, yeah. Torque screwdriver. Yep. Would a torque screwdriver head get into that hole? Yep. It looks quite small. Well, one of our um, sister brands, the Unicrimp there, they have a, a torque screwdriver which we've used and designed and based our terminal sizes on, which actually fits in there already. The torque settings are actually placed in the back of the consumer unit at the top as well, so it'll tell you exactly what torque settings you need to go to. I like that, that's lovely. But what else have we got? So if you just turn around and go that way, back towards it, we've got our smart range. So we previously had Click Smart, we've now upgraded that and gone for Click Smart Plus which operates on the Zigbee uh, protocol, which is something slightly different from Wi-Fi. What's this wi Zigbee? So it's the way that we transmit signals. Mm -hmm. Typically, we've seen in houses, people are used to having Wi-Fi. So that would send a signal out, um, multiple signals out at the same time to diff different devices. What Zigbee does is incorporates a mesh network. It sends a signal out from the hub to a device, and then the devices actually have the capability to then push on another signal across wow. to there that's for hardwired devices the battery ones don't then push on the signal and the reason they don't push on the signal is because they would drain the battery too quickly now the equipment for this is it big bulky or is it nice and you can get hide it out well, of the way what you've got here is, is what you can see is is the socket fits a 25 mil deep bat box works perfect so you fit it like any conventional socket the modules that sit behind here they need to have a little bit of space, so we're looking for 35 mil deep back boxes, which is more ideal. Now, how big is the, the um, control unit that goes into the, you could put it behind your switch, yeah, yeah. you put so, it in the lighting circuit? So you can either put them above the ceiling, above your down light, you could put the modules above there. They fit inside of the back of a box, as we mentioned already, or you could dim round mount them in a separate location next to the consumer unit or something like that. But we've also got uh, the, the PIR sensors, which can, you know, as soon as they start detecting anything, they could bring on a light. So similar to the window and door sensor, but they're more for motion. We've got the temperature and humidity sensor. That's to ensure that if it, the temperature drops, you could maybe have a fan plugged into a socket and which would come bring, it on. It'll bring it on. Well, I'm, I'm, I've just moved in a bungalow and I'm future-proofing. Yep. And uh, the furthest we got is open the toilet door, the PIR turns the light on, the fan on. Because as you get older and you want to pee at about 12 o'clock at night, you don't have to look for switches, okay. just open the door. Yeah, again, same, same sort of principle. What we can do as well is make sure that when you turn it on late at night, you could have your brightness set on your light, so it's not blinding you. So it comes on a, a lower setting, so it's a bit more. A bit it's, more. A, it's just crazy and incredible yeah. how electrics and technologies evolved. Yeah, yeah. Evolved. It's just when you know my days, it was a switch. Yeah. You know, you just turn the switch on, and now you can. You have this gizmo in the back of a switch, and you can just say, turn the lights on. And the best, uh, the best thing about it all on. is we've got. Uh, Alexa and Google compatibility. So, so we say, Alexa, turn on stand light right. Okay. Now, see, I'll say one thing about Alexa and she'll go straight to it. Alexa, play gold radio. Gold from Global Player. Smart eaters, join the energy radio. Oh, you got adverts. Here. We don't think that electric. Alexa, stop. Jay. Great, and um, welcome to Skullmore Sausage. So how does that light go off? Last but not least, we're at the ESP stand. Now, as I said on my bungalow, I'm future-proofing and I've put four cameras up. 
But I believe the cameras have come a long way away yes, since so my camera. The, the latest range that we've launched is the additions to our recoil range. So whereas we used to do kits, we're now doing a, a four-channel DVR, an eight-channel DVR. When you say four-channel, eight-channel, what, what do you mean? So when we refer to a channel, that's the number of cameras that you can have on the system. So now we're growing all the way from four to 16 cameras that we can do on our most competitively priced range. So that's not just a house, that's a building as well. That, that, that could, could be, be anywhere from a, a domestic premise to a small commercial industrial building. I see it's HD, does that mean it's sharper? Yeah, so we're full HD, 1080p, two megapixel. So the quality for a domestic small commercial building is, is absolutely fantastic. What we're also adding into this range is as well as the 3.6mm fixed lens cameras. What's three point? Oh, the, the size so, of the, the so lens? The size of the lens itself and, it, and the angle really. So that would be something like an 86 degree field of vision. Now we're adding in a 2.8mm camera, um, very focal and also a 5 to 50mm very focal camera. So these will enable you to do your larger distances and also with something like this you're getting 100, over 100 degree field of vision. This is a little bit narrower, but it will allow you to do more distance. So you, you're looking like in a car park or something like that a for this one. Absolutely. But my one, the house one, um, it's, it's more like this one. What I like, Gavin came down and he pixeled out, because it's a motion one, he pixeled out the buses that would pass my house and the cars so it wouldn't kick off. And, but you could still see them, but obviously it didn't start the camera off. Is this the same with these? Yeah, so this is a, another update. So we've upgraded the DVR on this. So we've gone to a, like a, a more kind of conventional style DVR. But while we've done it, we've upgraded the software. So we've now got features as well as motion detection. And as you say, being able to blank off certain areas. We can do line detection. We can do perimeter detection. Oh, yeah. Um, we can um, kind of section off specific areas. So, so you're not you section off, so you're not wasting any video or VCR. Exactly. So you actually you're actually filming what you really need to film, rather than picking up strays walking around and things like that. You've got it exactly. Not on your property. And and also so that you could say if this was the the boundary of your property, it ignores anybody that's away away from your property. But the moment that somebody steps onto your property you get a, an alert, a motion detection, a push notification, something like that, so that you know somebody's within your, your property. If I was away working like I'm, we're working now, could I get this on my telephone and talk to my wife? These DVRs, they do have a mic output, and we, on other ranges, we do have a camera that you can pick up sound as well. So it, it's something that can be done within some of our other Again, we're evolving, evolving. It's good. It's just getting better and better. And the standards are amazing now, aren't they? Yeah, the, the technology moves on at such a rate. And to think that this is our, our base point for CCTV, all the features and benefits that this product's got built into it as standard, it, it makes it a, a fantastic little product. Well, thanks, Scott. Thank you. That's amazing. That is good. This is Billy Byrne reporting from Coventry... Building Society Arena. Bus gone. Thank you. We've had two great days here. Everyone's packing up and it's time to go. See you on the next one.